And now, another proudly we hail, one of radio's outstanding dramatic half hours, starring Lee Tracy, and presented transcribed by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your star and host on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished Broadway stage, screen, and radio star, Lee Tracy. Thank you, Kenneth Banghart, and hello, everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. Quite a suspenseful title to our play, Lee, Nightmare. Yeah, and it's quite a suspenseful story, too, Ken. A tale of a frightened man facing a frightening choice. A choice between guarding a vital secret and the love of his family. Our first act will begin after your important message, Ken. Here's news, important news. Air Force enlistments have been restricted for a long time, but they're open again now. The United States Air Force needs trained veterans now. Yes, the Air Force needs radio and radar technicians, engine mechanics, communications technicians, weather technicians, and many other specialists. Now that Air Force enlistments are open again, get all the facts on how you can enlist in the United States Air Force now. Go to your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and join the Air Force. And now with your star Lee Tracy in the role of Clint, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production of Nightmare. To have met Clinton Montgomery on the street, you would not have guessed him to be one of the most brilliant physicists in the world. He was a large, rangy man who looked more like a big game hunter than a scientist. In your mind's eye, you might have pictured him with a gun in his hand, but never a test tube. His colleagues, of course, knew better. They knew Clinton Montgomery's life was centered on three things. His wife, his child, and his work. Well, what do you think? I'm a scientist. Nothing's supposed to frighten me. Well, it puts a different light on the whole thing, doesn't it? <laughs> I think it would be safe to say that. Of course, it's still pure formula. <laughs> Might not work. Knowing what we know, there isn't any reason it shouldn't. Have you shown this to anyone else? No. Oh, you're the boss. I wanted your reaction first. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm getting old. With your brilliance, you've opened a new Pandora's box that makes the present one look old-fashioned. Almost harmless. Well, there's one thing we can do. Only the two of us know about it. We can put it away and forget it. If the time ever comes that it's really needed, we can get it out. It may be too late, then. No, we can't do that. You've come this far with it. We've got to carry it through. Clint, the one thing we've got to guard against, above all else, is this leaking out. As few people as possible are going to know about it. This is one secret that's got to be kept if we expect to survive. <laughs> You're awfully quiet tonight, Dr. Montgomery. Huh? Oh, 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 oh I'm sorry, honey. I, I, I was thinking. Mm, I know. I think it's bad for you. It, it spoils your good looks. <laughs> well, that will <laughs> never do, huh? How was my girlfriend tonight? Did she miss me? We both missed you. We both missed you for the past two weeks. Do you know that you haven't been home once in that time before 10 o'clock? Mm, yeah, a lot of work. All work and no play makes Clint a dull boy. No, I'm sorry, kid. How are you making out with King Arthur? Oh, fine. We're slaying dragons right and left. Joni says that you remind her of Merlin. Merlin? <laughs> Me? <laughs> yes, you. She says you're a magic man, just like he was. <laughs> yeah, I'm a magic man, all right. <laughs> Look, tomorrow's Friday. I'll finish up early. We'll go on up to the lake for the weekend, for a good long weekend. Might even stay over Monday. Mm, I think that's the best thought you've had in two weeks. <laughs> the most normal, too. Paula! Joni! I'm home! Hey there! Ah, uh, hiding, huh? Well, I know where you are. You can't hide from me. Yeah. Uh -uh. Time out. 
Hello? Clint. Clint, I... Paula! Paula, what the... Dr. What? Montgomery, <laughs> I'm sure you recognize your wife's voice. Your daughter is here also. What the devil is it? Let me speak to my wife. Later, Dr. Montgomery. I think you'd better sit down and try to calm yourself. What I have to say is very important to both of us. Who is this? What if the... you be I... still, I'll explain. My name is unimportant. Call me East, if you like. Your wife and daughter are safe and will remain so if you do as I tell you. You... You... You kidnapped them? Why... Say, listen. I don't have any money. It isn't money that I or my employers are interested in. We want your formula, Dr. Montgomery. And when we receive it, your loved ones will be returned to you unharmed. It's as simple as that. If you refuse to follow our instructions, I assure you... You'll never see either of them again alive. Do I make myself clear? Dr. Montgomery, did you hear me? Yes, I heard you. Good. Now let me point out several facts. Any telephone call you make, we'll know about. Your wires are tapped. Anywhere you go, you'll be watched. Try to get in touch with the police or try to trick us in any way, and you'll have signed a death warrant for your wife and child. Wait a minute now. I, I can't get my formula... Even if I would. No. And why not? It's no longer accessible, even to me. But you're the man who developed it, aren't you? That's right, but for the sake of security, it's no longer at our laboratory. We're only working now on a phase of it. We realize that, Dr. Montgomery, and that's why we've come to you. You're the one man who could sit down and write it out. I don't think I could. It's not two plus two. No. It's a matter of life or death for your family. We realize it will take some time. You have until 6 p.m. Sunday. If I should have instructions before that time, I'll call. Otherwise, you won't hear from me until the appointed time. This has no doubt been a great shock to you, but I suggest you get right to work. And remember, Dr. Montgomery, we have a scientist here who will know. Now, don't be a fool if you really love your wife and child. Anybody home? Clint. Huh? What, what, what? Oh. Huh. Hello, Rita, Jim. Hey, boy. What's the matter? Matter? No, nothing. No, nothing's the matter. We, uh, we just thought we'd take a chance on finding you home. Yeah, well, I wondered if you and Paula would like to play some bridge. Bridge? No, no, no thanks. I, I've got to work. Oh, is Paula here? No, no. She's out. Oh, well... You mind if I take a peek at Joni? She's out, too. I, I mean, they're away. They, uh, they, they went up to the lake for the weekend. Oh. Well, uh, I guess we better run along. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry if Paula isn't here. Sorry I've got to work. But I've got to. Are you sure you're all right, Clint? Oh, yes. Yes, I'm, I'm fine, thanks. I'm, I'm just fine. I'll give you a ring tomorrow. Take it easy. Come on, Rita. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, tomorrow. Good night. I don't get it. I suppose he's sick. Maybe we better call Paula. It's just what I was thinking. He looked like he was drugged, like he didn't even recognize us. He really put the hair up on the back of my head when we walked in there. Well, you can't work all day and all night and not expect it to catch up with you sometime. We'd better get Paula back here fast. What's the matter? How could Paula get up to the lake when their car is right there by the garage? Well? She's not there. And the Andersons say none of them have been up in over a month. That's dandy. I think we'd better call a doctor. Or the police. What? What do you mean? Listen, I'm going back there and have a talk with him. Maybe we're just imagining things. If he's sick, I'll get a doctor. But one way or the other, I'm going to find out what's going on. Jim, what do you want? Huh? What are you staring at? 
Do you uh, usually answer the door with a gun in your hand? Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was just cleaning it. Can I come in? It's late. Can't it wait till tomorrow? I don't think so. What do you mean? You said Paula and Joni were at the lake. They're not. We called. You called? May I ask what the devil business it is of yours, where they are? I'm sorry, Clint. We were just worried about you. You don't look well. You're not acting like yourself. We wondered if there was anything we could do. Yes. Mind your own blasted business. Yes, you have been having visitors. That's right. And they're suspicious of something already. I told them my wife and daughter were at the lake. They called the lake. They want to know where they are. What do I do now? That is your problem. Tell them you had a fight. She's left you, taken the child, gone home to mother. I trust you're making progress, Dr. Montgomery. If I ever get my hands on you, you... You won't. <laughs> Pleasant dream. Dr. Montgomery? Yeah. My name's Murata. I'm with the police. Police? That's right. Mind if I ask you a few questions? Just routine. Won't take much of your time. Come in. Nice day. Yeah. Right in here. Sit down. Anywhere. Uh, I was fixing myself a cup of coffee. You want one? No, thanks. Batching it? What? Yeah. What's this all about? Go ahead with your breakfast. I'll wait, thank you. Okay. Your uh, wife and daughter are away, right? Right. Mind telling me where they are? Oh, I see. <laughs> Some people by the name of Powers have anything to do with this? They were worried. Blasted busybodies. What about the family? I don't think that's any of your business either. Well, it depends. You told him your wife and kid went up to the lake, only they're not there. After Mr. Powers had been to see you last night, his wife called, and you told her they were staying with friends up there, but you wouldn't tell them with whom. Don't add up. They got worried, called us. Before we go any farther, I'd like some proof of who you are. Hmm? Oh, sure. Here. Joseph Marotti, Lieutenant Police. Are you married, Lieutenant? Yeah, sure. So? So, have you ever had a fight with your wife? Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> because I happen to think it was none of the power's business. Does that make it a crime? Calm down, Doctor. I said it was routine. Later was something like this, but the captain's a friend of theirs, so... Here I am. I've been working too much lately. We... We had an argument, a bad one. It was my fault. When I came home Friday night, she and my daughter were gone. There was a nice note explaining the whole thing. It was a shock. Of course, the powers had to pick that time to arrive. I told them the first thing that came into my head. You have the note? I don't have the note. Wasn't anything I wanted to say. Did she say where she was going? No. Uh, just that she'd get in touch with me when she'd had... Time to think things over. Now, does that satisfy you? Sorry, Doc. My business, though. Mind if I have a look around? What for? Don't you believe me? Sure, sure, I believe you. Just routine. I think it's also routine to have a search warrant. Well, I, I can get that. This would save a lot of trouble. All right, have a look around. And please go. I've got a lot of work to do. Captain, Murata. Well, it looks phony. Handed to me a lot of baloney about a fight with his wife. Said she'd up and left. I didn't leave any address. Only trouble was she and the kid forgot to take any clothes with him. Yeah, he's as jumpy as a cat. It wouldn't surprise me if he had them both buried in the cellar.
Lee Tracy, starring in the role of Dr. Clint Montgomery in the proudly we hail production Nightmare, will return in just a moment for the second act. Here's a message of real importance to young men who finished high school this year. As you probably know, Air Force enlistments have been restricted for a long time. Many young men who wanted to join the Air Force couldn't. Well, here's important news. Air Force enlistments are open again. Once again, many of you bright young Americans will find a good job in the Air Force. You'll take an aptitude test so the Air Force can find what kind of job you're best fitted to do, whether it's in radio, radar, mechanics, meteorology, or many other fields. You'll get the finest training in the world. You'll have an opportunity to attend a technical school and continue your education. And because our Air Force is growing so fast, there are plenty of chances to get ahead. The sky's the limit. So don't worry about what you'll do now that you've finished high school. You'll find the answer to that all-important question at your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now with your star Lee Tracy in the role of Dr. Clint Montgomery, we present the second act of Nightmare. got to get away. I'll go out through the back cellar window and crawl if I reach the woods. I can't watch this place too well in a storm like this. Not much farther. Have to go carefully. May have someone in the woods. Keep down. Crawl. I better not try to lay up on this ridge and walk into the city. It must look like a drenched rat. I suppose I'll watch him around his house, but I can't watch everywhere, not on a night like this. 46 High Street must be off Gavin if he's the Marathi listed in the book. He's got to be. Here, yeah. drink this. Thanks. How do the clothes fit? Fine. You uh, won't let me call in the federal boys, huh? Can't you understand if... If they found out about a secret like this, a secret not more than 50 people in the whole world are supposed to know, the chances are they'd know if you called in the authorities right now. I just can't take that chance, Marotti. Okay, Doc. You think you convinced that bird who called you after I left this morning? I think so. I acted worried. Not that I wasn't. I told him you were a policeman. I said I was sure you'd believed my story. Tell him my name. Well, I said I wasn't sure of it. I said I thought it was Mendotti or Morale. Well, there are a few things we can do to set things up without taking any chances. First, I want you to write this whole thing down right from the beginning. Why? My wife goes to church at 9 o'clock. So does a friend of ours. He's head of the FBI office here in the city. Helen will get your story to him in a covering letter from me. We'll have them in an envelope. Where are you going to be? I'm going back with you, Doc. If you got out without being seen, I think we can both get back in. I suppose you're right, but I hate taking any extra risks. You've taken a big one already, Doc. If you want your wife and daughter, you'll have to be willing to take others. Got to work on the idea that these babies don't know is really going to hurt them. What time is it? 5.25. Now, why don't you sit down? Try to relax. Do you really think we got in without being seen? Yes, I do. You know how dark it was? But he hasn't called all day. Well, he's still got a half hour, hasn't he? Yes, 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 I know. You got any cigarettes? I'm out. Here. Take the pack. Thanks. You better keep down, out of sight. Got this formula thing all fixed up for them? What? Oh, Yes, yes, that was done long ago. Pretty important thing, huh? Yes, Marotti. Just about the most important formula in this world today. I wish to the devil I'd... I'll get on the extension. Hello? Hello? Uh, uh hello, Clint. This is Jim. I wanted to, uh... We'll apologize for all the trouble we caused. Look, Jim, forget all about it. Just call me back later, will you? I'm busy right now. Oh, sure, sure, you bet. And 
If there's anything we can do... No, 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 nothing, thanks. Just, just, just forget about it. Okay, but... I'll see you later, Jim. <laughs> Goodbye. Someday, uh... Well, don't be too hard on him. He got us interested in you. Huh? Yeah. I suppose I owe him that. What time is it? 5.30. 30 minutes to go. Look, maybe their plans got fouled up. Maybe they... They know I tried to double-cross them. It's almost seven. He said six. The only reason... All right, now, just take it easy. Hello? Good evening, Dr. Montgomery. You will excuse my not calling sooner. We have had things to check. I trust you have what we want? Yes. Good. It is better to be logical about such things. Now, follow these instructions carefully. Do you know where the turnpike goes up past Eagle Rocks? Yeah. Just beyond the rocks is a dirt road on the right. Follow that until it ends. You'll be met there. What about my wife and daughter? Their safety depends on you. If you try in any way to trick us... They sure picked a lovely spot. It's thickly wooded. How are things in the trunk? Rough. Oh. We're coming to the end. Don't do anything now to make them suspicious. Now what? Don't turn around. Don't. All right. Now put these on. Glasses? That's right. Glasses. Only the way they're made, you won't be able to see out of them. My wife. Shut up you... and slide over. I'll do the driving from now on. I said slide over and be quick about it. Now, just sit there and behave. All right, get out and keep those glasses on. There are steps ahead. Well, good evening, Dr. Montgomery. I hope you'll forgive the inconvenience. Sit him down. Might just as well be comfortable, huh? Where's my wife? Bring her in. If you've harmed her... You've harmed her, you... man. Don't be absurd. We don't harm anyone if they behave... Keep those glasses on him. All right, get her out of here. Calm yourself, Dr. Montgomery. As you could hear, your wife is perfectly all right, and so is the child. Let's get this over with. What you want is in my pocket. Excellent. Get it. Not that we don't trust you, but it will take a little time to check this information. We have a man right here to do it, so sit back and relax. Have a cigarette, if you like. Well, Doctor, let me congratulate you on a fine job. I have been assured that this is exactly what we wanted. You have kept your part of the bargain, and I shall certainly keep mine. You shall have your wife and child. However, there is one consideration that somehow slipped my memory. Consideration? What else is it con to consider? Let us go. Well, my employers have reasoned, and quite logically, that it would be much better under the circumstances for the man who so brilliantly developed this theory to have the chance to put it to work where it will do the most good. I don't understand. It's very simple. We have arranged for you and your family to take a trip. Quite a long trip. Of course, before we leave, it will be necessary for you to sign a statement we have written for you. Nothing to it just says that you're tired of working for warmongers and you're going to a country where you can devote your time to working for peace. You're very thorough, aren't you? Very. Of course, if I refuse, 
You'd do things to my wife and daughter until I couldn't stand it anymore and agreed to what you want. Regrettable, but true. You stop at nothing. To get what we want, nothing. As soon as I was sure the coast was clear, I got out of the truck and hightailed it up to the road. Found a farmhouse, made the call. The boys were already in waiting. The rest was simple. How's the wife and kid? Ah, much better. We can never repay any of you. Thank you, nosy friend. <laughs> I'll do that. What about the man who calls himself uh, East? Uh, he got away. We let him get away. He's got the formula, too. What? Why, good Lord, men. Do you know Sure, that... sure, sure. We know. Uh, you tell him, Duck. He's got the formula all right, Jim, but it's not quite the same as the original. I made one slight error, an error none of them will ever catch. Awfully brainy guy, the duck. You remember the question you had, Jim? You thought that, uh, well, you remember what you thought until I proved what might happen if it was done that way. You mean... That's what I mean. East is going to get away, and they're going to try it out. We might even hear the noise over here, because one way or the other, <laughs> it's going to blow them all to kingdom come. Our star, Lee Tracy, will return in a moment with a word about next week's show. Here's a special note for young women. You know, that list of the best-dressed women in America hasn't come out yet, but we can tell right now that one girl is sure to be on it. She's the girl in the new blue uniform worn by the women in the Air Force. But that girl in the WAF uniform is smart in another way, too. That's right. She's found a good career and a great outfit, working on equal terms with the men of the Air Force in hundreds of interesting, challenging jobs. She's found a service in which the way is open to the top by means of officer candidate schools that turn out smart WAF officers. Many girls with college degrees are enlisting in the WAF directly for officer candidate school, winning their commissions in the world's greatest Air Force. Yes, in more ways than one, the woman in the United States Air Force is the smartest woman of the year. How about you? Can you qualify? If you're between the ages of 18 and 34, Ask your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station for the details. Join the smartest women of the year in the United States Air Force. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. Proudly We Hail stars Lee Tracy. Supporting Mr. Tracy in the role of Lieutenant Murata was Bill Lipton. Nightmare was written by DeWitt Cup. The music was composed and conducted by John Guarnier. This program was produced under the supervision of Charles and Rogers Productions and directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking. And here again is your host and star, Lee Tracy. Join us next week over the same station for Proudly We Hail, won't you? Our play is entitled Deadly Passage. And you'll journey with the captain and crew of the schooner Mermaid on an ill-fated voyage, a voyage of fear and terror for all on board. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye.